All right, so piriformis, this should be review. It's one of our um, palpable, really important deep lateral rotators of the hip um, to massage. So it originates on the anterior surface of the sacrum. So again, these three-dimensional drawings, we can't really see that well, but it goes to wrap around the front of the sacrum. However, even though it wraps around the front, it's still really important to massage right along the side of it there. And it inserts on the superior aspect of the greater trochanter. And now you know all the muscles that wrap around the, the greater trochanter. Um, so you know why we've been emphasizing this whole time to work all the, all the spokes of the muscles that attach to the different parts of it. Let's um, act out the movements while we say them. So go ahead and stand up if you can or use your models. If you can't stand up or don't want to stand up, piriformis laterally rotates the hip. All right, good job. Say it, do it, laterally rotates the hip. All right, now keep your foot there and do that same motion. Whoa, see, same motion, foot still, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, and A, B, duck the hip. Go ahead and say it, do it. A, B, duck the hip, abduct. Excellent. All right, great job, great job. Let's move along. The piriformis muscle. The piriformis is a small but thick muscle that is found in the pelvic region. It lies deep to the gluteal musculature and as it exits the pelvis it comes in close proximity to the sciatic nerve and several major blood vessels. It functions to restrain medial rotation of the leg during walking and running. It also serves to help hold the head of the femur within the hip joint during movement of the joint. Let's take a look at the landmarks. We have the ilium, the sacrum, and the femur. The origin of the piriformis is on the anterior surface of the sacrum, and it inserts on the medial aspect of the greater trochanter of the femur. Contraction of the piriformis produces lateral rotation of the upper leg at the hip. The gluteus maximus is synergistic during this motion, and the adductor magnus and hamstrings oppose this motion. The coccyx oddly reminds me of the ankle. <laughs> Clinical findings for the piriformis muscle. Dr. Travell refers to the piriformis muscle as the double devil because trigger points in this muscle can cause pain in two ways. First, by the referred pain to the sacroiliac joint and or the hip, and second, by a condition known as piriformis syndrome, where a tense piriformis muscle compresses the sciatic nerve as it exits the pelvis, causing sciatica symptoms such as radiating pain, numbness, and tingling that travel down the leg to the foot. Some factors that may activate or perpetuate trigger points in the piriformis include the pain associated with true sacroiliac dysfunction, sudden foot slip, twisting sideways while bending and lifting, running, sexual positioning, impact trauma, car accident, <laughs> chronic pelvic inflammatory disease, and hip replacement surgery. <laughs> the gluteus minimus trigger points are often associated with trigger points in the piriformis muscle.
Some common misdiagnoses for active trigger points in the piriformis muscle include sciatica, secondary to a disc herniation, and hip joint arthritis. That's sad. What's that? Like, I was just like, wait, I've worked with these points already, but it's, yeah, we worked with them on Friday. And yeah, these ones are really common. Yeah, in Asian medicine, this is one of the ones, yeah. Um, GB30, Huang Chao is also, yeah. And, uh, the you know, this is very common. Your clients, even if they say they have sciatica, they might just have piriformis syndrome. But even if they do have sciatica, a lot of times they will still have the trigger points that are also part of the pattern or aggravating the pattern. So really good one to release. All right, we'll skip the, the practice of um, all the synergist antagonists and area because you're pretty shot. So we'll move on to our last muscle. 